A S M R Ring any bells? How about autonomous sensory meridian response? No? Still nothing? This isn't something that gets reported in YouTube's analytics, but my guess is that around 50% of you will have a very clear idea of what ASMR is, and the other 50% will have absolutely no idea. So for that second 50%, ASMR is an idea that's been floating around the internet for quite a few years now, and I think it's become particularly popular with the rise of YouTube. What it refers to is a sort of tingling, pleasurable sensation that some people get from some kinds of sounds. It's typically associated with very quiet sounds, often including the human voice, particularly when it's whispering. Millions and millions and millions and millions. As well as various kinds of popping, clicking and rustling noises. Some people think the sounds are stimulating or arousing, but many of the videos you see on YouTube are concerned more with relaxation or even sleep. But at its heart, ASMR deals with pleasurable sensations that are caused by quiet sounds. Now to some people this may all sound a bit weird, another strange internet fetish. But I think it's something most of us experience at one point or another. The phrase whispering sweet nothings in your ear captures the feeling pretty well, I think. And that's hopefully something most of us experience at one time or another. So long. There's no doubt also that from looking at the numbers these videos get that there's a lot of interest in this stuff out there. So being a composer, this got me thinking about who were the most ASMR composers, and might the topic be a good way into some more unusual pieces of contemporary classical music? Playing with what you might call an active but very quiet texture is something that's been part of my own music for quite some time. Outside of classical music, there's plenty of examples that people do ascribe ASMR qualities to. Whether it's the delicate swoosh of the snare drum in jazz, or the buzz of a West African barlophone, the electronic crackle of a Bjork track, or the whispered tones of Liz Harris's grouper. So what about classical music? Well, the first person I thought of when I started thinking about this was Hans Abrahamson. And it's a piece by him, actually, that I'm going to claim is the most ASMR piece in classical music later in the video. Abrahamson is a Danish composer who I first came across back in the 90s. This piece, Winternacht, deals with a surreal landscape where these twinkly, delicate sounds overlap. It sounds a bit like a surreal fairy tale. More recently, a piece of his called Schnee also fits this category extremely well. It creates a sort of oral white noise that relates to snow, the title. Much of it even seems to imitate the sounds of footsteps crunching through snow, or the very delicate sounds of snowflakes falling on the ground. When you look around, there are actually quite a lot of composers who work in this space. Of course, the thing that's well known about ASMR is that the tingle factor is entirely subjective. What for some would be a shivery thrill would for others just be annoying. So don't expect to like all of these examples. Another aspect that's apparently important to some people is whether or not the sound was made intentionally. Obviously being composed pieces, all of these sounds are basically intended, so I guess if that's your thing, these may not be for you. The next composer I'd like to mention is Helmut Lachenmann. He works almost exclusively with noises, finding all sorts of unusual ways to make unusual sounds from conventional instruments, always precisely notating them. Here's part of his string quartet, Reigen Seliger Geister. This interest in quiet textures of sound goes back to, I think, Anton Webern. One of his quietest pieces is the Five Pieces for Orchestra from 1913, which again plays with delicate but active textures. It's 
So all of these pieces are quiet and active in a way that might please some ASMR types. But I think it's fair to say that it's a limited number of people out there who will get true tingles down the spine reactions from them. But when it comes to a composer like Arvo Pett, there's no doubt he's managed to create more than his fair share of tingles. And the delicate second half of his piece, Tabula Rasa, achieves its ASMR effect with a mixture of violin harmonics and the occasional gongs of the prepared piano. More recently, composers like Max Richter have specifically targeted the branch of audience interested in relaxation and tranquility first with his Blue Notebook album, which features Tilda Swinton talking alongside a delicate and textured background. They had been growing during all the years since they had been cut down. And more recently, his eight-hour album Sleep, which, apart from anything else, brilliantly encourages Spotify users to leave on overnight, which must help nicely clock up those royalties. delicate, tingle-inducing music has been around in classical music for some time. In Berlioz's Romeo and Juliet, the mixture of harp with the delicate vocal line certainly gives me some tingles. I already talked previously about Mahler's Das Lied von der Erde. Another great example is Strauss's Four Last Songs. There was a recent BBC documentary in which the presenter Alan Yentob put this track on while neuroscientists monitored his brain using an MRI scan. And what they saw was unlike any response they'd seen before, where most music would give a sort of modest change in brain activity. For this piece, Yentob's brain was entirely bathed in blood. His entire brain was awoken by this music. And I think this might have been one of the best scientific demonstrations of the ASMR effect ever caught on camera. And this is where we come back to that Abrahamson piece I mentioned. It's called Let Me Tell You, and reviewers have compared it to both Strauss's four last songs and Mahler's Song of the Earth, particularly for the emotional impact of its final section. And this piece pulls out all the ASMR stops. It's very delicate throughout with numerous and varied active textures that are just audible from the rubbing of sandpaper on a drum to the scrape of a guiro, to the running of fingernails up and down a keyboard. It features the human voice and a remarkable one in the form of Barbara Hannigan. who's able to pick out with pinpoint accuracy these delicate high notes which hang in the air like soft beams of light. And I don't think I'm alone in finding shivers aplenty in this gorgeous, delicate music. It certainly gets my vote for the most ASMR piece of classical music yet written. Thanks very much for watching. I'd love to hear your comments if you've got any other pieces you think are particularly ASMR. If you enjoyed the channel, do please consider joining my patrons over at Patreon, and I'll see you next time.